But what's funny about it all is that we need these things to perform. But we don't take a second to realize the purpose is always there. The purpose never leaves us because the very purpose is you. You are always the purpose. There may be another purpose, like being a SEAL or going to college or whatever, but the main purpose in life is you. So if you wake up in the morning and you don't want to do something, you don't care enough about yourself. And that's what you need to really research is, man, why am I not doing this for myself? Because that is, that is the number one purpose in life, is to better oneself. So that's the only purpose I fucking need. So the reason I get up every day, even though there's no race, or there's no school, or there's nothing in front of me, is because I have pride in myself. Well, where do you go to? You wake up on a morning, it's cold, it's mm -hmm. wet, it's dark, you've got no cartilage in your knee, you've mm -hmm. got shitty shorts, whatever it is that's the issue today. Keep talking. It's warm on the couch. That's your it. missus says stay in that's bed. It. It's comfy, that's it's cozy, it. that's you've it. got work later on, you had an argument last night, you're that's slightly it. hungover. Cause I know every motherfucker ain't gonna do what I'm gonna do. So this is how you level up. That's how you level up. I know there's a whole bunch of people with that right there, that fires me up. That makes me fucking happy what you just said. That brings joy to my life right there. Why? Because I know there's so many people that have the ability and just refuse to get off that couch. Refuse to study a few more hours. Refuse to go deeper, to go further. And that's where I gain the advantage. It's so easy to be great nowadays, my friend, because most people are weak. Most people don't want to go to that extra mile. Most people don't want to find that extra because it sucks. It's miserable. It's lonely. You talked about that you were kind of, you know, lonely by yourself. I was the same way. And that used to hurt me growing up. Now I fucking thrive in that shit. That's the only place to be. A lot of people, you know, wonder, how did you become this? How do you become so vulnerable? How, do you be, how are you doing a podcast now when you were this kid? You overcame things. You fought them. And now this is what happens. This is on the other side of overcoming. It becomes, you become very, very powerful when you overcome yourself. All those things you once cowered from, you were afraid of, and you face them eye to eye every day, you now become a person who has a great podcast. Let's say that there's someone listening who resonates with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been through trauma, they've been through hard times, mm -hmm. but they keep breaking promises to themselves mm -hmm. and they're struggling to get off the couch and they're having a pity party. Mm -hmm. How can they stop feeling sorry for themselves? That's a difficult one. Because you have to want it. You have to want to be better. And it starts off with you have to have pride in yourself. You, you have to have pride in yourself. You have to have this something about you, whether it's your last name, whether it's just the smallest thing. You have to be proud of yourself. If you have no pride in yourself, I can't give it to you. Because you're always going to compromise. You're always, always going to fold. Always. I'm very proud of myself. That's why when people said, you know way you can do better than can't hurt me. Roger that. We'll fucking see. Because a lot of people, when they think about working out, they think of it as being a physical thing. Right, no. No, I did it for mental. Yeah, people always say, "My God, like no, don't don't look at it like I didn't care about losing weight. I didn't care about being the fastest person. I didn't care about. I wasn't making the Olympics. I wasn't going to pros. I could barely read and write when I was in a, a junior in high school. I wasn't going anywhere. I saw working out as a way for me to build calluses on my mind. I had a callus over the victim's mentality. So I watched these movies. I you know I talked about Rocky last time I was on here. I always equated training to mental toughening. Like, it always looked brutal. People waking up early and doing all these things and look looked horrible. I was like, wow, man, I got to start doing that. Not to get better, bigger, and stronger, but that is what's going to build me. That looks uncomfortable. That looks brutal. And getting up early, I don't want to do that. So I made this long list of things that I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. I started, like, I'm like, you guys aren't doing this shit in high school. You guys are getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning, running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than, than the average human being. I was like, hang on a second. I have something they don't have. 
And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great, never-ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem. Now, is this something that you learn? Is this something you learn yourself from, from exercise yourself? Or is this something you have read or heard about? Like, what made you equate this doing this and doing these difficult things physically to mental toughness to being this is the discipline that you need in order to get your life out of the situation you're in? So I never read anything. You know, I, I could barely read, you know, so right. I wasn't reading back then. I just saw, I watched a lot of movies and I was really big into visualization. And um, I always equated working out to struggle. And I struggled my whole life, but I ran from it. So I started realizing that I got to start facing the struggle and I got to be mentally strong for the struggle. So that's why I started kept coming up with like, I, I'm training for life. Mentally, I'm training for life. I'm not training for like to, to lift 400 pounds. And I found out on my own pretty much is that through this, through, through discipline, through self-discipline, through repetition, do tons of repetition of the same thing that you don't want to do and that's the, and that's the key thing through repetition of things you don't want to do you develop mental like uh, like an armor for your mind you start to armor your mind your mind's like okay we suffer we suffer every day it's what we do we do stuff that sucks every day so then when the suck stuff comes you're ready for it and that's how it started coming up you know i just started being very uncomfortable now I'm, it's like a just a way of life it's a crazy thing to figure out though it's like that you figured it out and you didn't just figure it out you embraced it like when you were talking about your senior year of high school you're talking about your your mirror being your accountability mirror like you had a radical shift like you just decided to not be a fucking loser right. and to start tightening up and start holding yourself accountable and, and get ready for things so i had this my whole life i mean i don't know if people believe in god or what i don't care what you believe in there's been this unrelenting voice in my head we all have this voice it's the right or wrong voice. And a lot of times that voice guides us into comfort. And my voice guided me to comfort a lot. But I had this other voice I heard my whole life. Say, hey, motherfucker, what are you doing? No, nah, man, we got to go over here. We got to go over here to, to that rock pile over in the fucking corner where nobody's at. That's, that's where victory's at. We're over there in that corner. So this voice was giving me all these answers. Now, I wasn't a real smart kid growing up, but I had this crazy voice in my head saying, over there is where the fucking answers are. And I didn't want to listen to it because over there was pain. Over there was me looking in the mirror. Over there was me being accountable for all these things that went through my life. Even though people put them on me, it's now mine to own. And I didn't want to go over there by myself, but I had to. And this voice was guiding me there. It's God, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that's what, that's what it was in me.